Okay, you guys. Um, I have been told <clears throat> last night by the Holy Spirit that it is now time for me to begin my teachings. And um, this is what I will be doing. The fact that uh, that I have been so uh, brutally uh, abused, and so has my teacher, Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj, um, is very unfortunate because you're about to all understand what kind of a sleep you're all in as I go through and explain what in fact the truth is. So for the very first thing that I'm going to do, just to give you an idea of how you can understand what sleep is and what being awake is, in very clear terms, I'm going to give you a very simple example of this. We're going to go right straight to the Bible, to the book of Genesis to the very first sentence. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And yet God had not created the sun yet. God saw that the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening. And there was morning. The first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate the water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky. I want you to understand what is being said here. God made the vault, which is the sky, and separated the water under the vault the water under the sky from the water above the sky. Do you understand? We're, we're, we're looking at rain and I'll stick with rain. We're looking at rain as the evaporation of water from the earth. There literally is water above the sky. Okay. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and gathered waters. He called seas and God saw that it was good. I'm missing the verse that I want that I wanted to bring to your attention because I don't want to go through that whole that whole verse there. So let me just pull it up on Google. John one one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, in the sleep, in the sleep, when we hear this, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. God spoke these words, and the Word was God. This is our sleep. We think of God speaking these words. 
he spoke everything into creation so god just said let there be water and there was water god said let there be land and there was land this is our sleep understanding of in the beginning was the word what is the awake version of this very same thing well when a person is awake we see through layers of sleep what what happens when a person speaks number one we need the air we need the air to push the words out right we also need vibration of the vocal cords to allow sound sound there's vibration there's energy to push these words out in the beginning one of the first things God created was light what did I say the entire universe and everything that in it is created by light sound vibration and energy you see in our sleep all we hear in this verse is God said let there be a, a, a an ocean and there was God said let there be stars and there was but an awakened being sees the light sound vibration and energy of God's creation of everything which is why when you bring everything down to quantum physics and we're going down to science we're not going into mysticism we're going into science with quantum physicists so now you understand that scientists they want evidence they want evidence so they understand when they see atoms it is the vibration of the atoms that causes a change in matter and then there is a, an increase or decrease in density of this these atoms and these vibrations and sound and light and energy there's an increase or decrease in density which creates different forms of matter which is why we have human bodies we have insect bodies we have grass we have trees there are different densities of light energy sound and vibration that created all of these things every single thing is of God every single thing we are not separate from anything on this planet anything and God spoke it into creation and now you understand what is the mechanism of speech this is what an awake being sees and knows so now here's what I would like to tell you for a few hours last night the Holy Spirit led me to look up all these things What does the Bible say about spiritual energy? What what was leading me was was my my pull and my push to ask the Holy Spirit to show me the truth of what I learned from Nisargadatta's teachings and what is in the Bible. Where does it all mesh? And if he would show it to me so what does the Bible say about spiritual energy well we all know that spiritual energy exists I personally know this because I can feel energy we all on some level understand that we have an energy body here energy or electricity is what pumps the heart is what runs to flow through our nervous system 
You know in the winter time when you stand next to somebody and you touch them, you will give somebody a shock. There is energy flowing through this body. We have an energy body. We have a spirit body. We have a light body. We have an astral body. We have a physical body. Are you understanding this now? What did God say when he created everything? Well, he created everything by his word. How, what is the mechanism of the word? It's light, sound, vibration, and energy. And we have all of these bodies in this physical body. Okay? Ephesians 6, 10 to 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand the schemes of the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand firm, Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. You have to understand that when, when, when you're hearing these Bible verses, there is a depth, a depth to these verses that while in the sleep you are unable to see. This is the waking up process. We are spirit beings in this form. This form is nothing more than light, sound, vibration, and energy. This is all this form is, which is why without our spirit selves, this body is a corpse. When the spirit leaves this body, this body is dead. Yet without this body, our spirit selves cannot experience life here, which is why all these demons jump into this house. So th there's a symbiotic relationship that goes on with this body between our spirit man and this body. This body needs the spirit man in order to stay alive. And the spirit man needs the body in order to experience life in this dimension. Proverbs 3, 5 to 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. John 4 24 God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth Hebrews 4 12 for the word of God is living and active sharper than any two-edged sword piercing the division of soul and spirit of joints and of marrow and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart as you've seen over and over again, this is all I keep doing is bringing up what does the Bible say because I have already come to an understanding of these things. It's now only for me to have you understand these things and I fully understand that you will not accept anything that I say because these pastors have poisoned you to believe that I am a witch and a demon. So everything I say, I bring through the Bible. So that you can trust what I'm saying. First Corinthians 12, six, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. Galatians 5, 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. 
anything negative, whether it's negative behavior coming from other people towards you or any negative behavior that you are experiencing within yourself. Understand our spirit man was created in the image and likeness of God. Anything other than these gifts that are of God are coming from the world and they're coming from Satan. It is very simple. It is very simple. It is only these sleepers out here who are trying to complicate it so that you will you will believe that they are the only ones who know what's going on and they don't have a clue. It is very simple. Anything that is not of good, of righteousness, of holiness comes from the world, comes from Satan's kingdom. It is that simple. John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Which is absolute truth. Second Timothy 3, 16, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. We only change through pain. We only change through being put in a place where we're out of our comfort zone. Because if we stay in a place of comfort, we have no desire to change. Never ever look down on a bad situation because it is there for your growth. God will never set out to purposely hurt you, but he will allow your edification and education, your growth and your maturity. It is in fact a blessing. First John 4, 8, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. This is what I've been saying out here from day one, from day one. And you will notice every, every prophetic word I've ever uttered has come from this Bible, has come from this Bible. There's no off anything, half truths about anything. It has all come from this Bible. So this was, what, what, what does the Bible say about spiritual energy? And I want you to fully understand, there was something said last night that uh, I am going to uh, push back against again. There was a statement made last night that demons are only inside your body and they are not on your body. And I will stand to correct this person yet again. Demons are all around us. We are in fact right smack dab in the middle of Satan's kingdom. Demons are all around us. If you are not open to sin, if you are not sinning, these demons are still waiting around, waiting for their opportunity. If you are sensitive to the spirit world, you can feel these demons touching you. They can't enter you. They have no legal right to enter you, but they are all around you. I am, in fact, very sensitive to the spirit world, and I feel these, these beings touching me. Demons are all around you. As you will now understand by this little example that I gave you about in the beginning was the word and that God spoke everything into existence, but it doesn't go into detail about what exactly does that mean. It is only when you are an awakened being that you fully understand what those words mean. And this is the same thing about this person who keeps saying the same sleeper nonsense all over again. Uh, when you are oppressed by demons, they will enter the form. When you're living in sin, you are opening a door to let these demons in. 
when your life has changed and you have fully found that narrow path and you are fully living on that narrow path no demon can enter you any longer but it does not mean they are not all around you if you are sensitive to the spirit world you can feel these beings touching you demons are all around you at all times which is why you must rebuke this sin renounce your sin and never go back to it never go back to it you're only understanding things from a, a one-dimensional perspective and the more these sleepers feel that they they are the the chosen anointed and they continuously want to correct me i will continuously rebuke what they're saying and prove it to you and they're the ones that are constantly going to have egg on their face because they are not open to learning they are not open to awakening and that does not mean that all of you must stay in the sleep because of these people so in fact there are demons all around us all the time if you are sensitive to the spirit world you can literally feel these beings touching you so no demons are not only inside the Bible does not explicitly tell everything as you've just heard me say this is why I put that that example first what is the mechanism of speech well the Bible doesn't go into detail about that now does it the Bible speaks about Jesus casting out demons it doesn't go into detail about what what demons actually are and where they are what it does go into detail about is that mysticism worshiping false gods it, it talks about uh the, the demons names um what as the holy spirit begins to wake us up he will show us he will show us there's no doubt that the bible has revealed everything but when you're asleep you only see what's in the one-dimensional words written on the page you don't understand the depth of what you're looking at and the more these people want to constantly correct what I say they're not only prolonging their sleep but they're also prolonging your sleep you have got to get out of this mob mentality and start being an individual and walk alone this is a solo path get out of the clicks this is a solo path you have got to find the narrow path as Jesus said very few people will find it why because it's human nature to want to congregate in clicks and find your tribe so that the lost will lead the lost if you are one that has a backbone and can stand on your own you will find the narrow path seek and you will find knock and the door will be open for you ask and it shall be given do you understand as long as you are willing to transcend the world which means get rid of that click that click belongs to Satan that click is trying to keep you in the sleep stand on your own two feet and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to that narrow path because that's all you want to know is where is that narrow path how do I get there and how do I stay there and you won't find that answer in a click okay so I just read about uh, spiritual energy What does the Bible say about being spiritually awake? Luke 21, 36. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place 
and to stand before the Son of Man. Ephesians 5.14 For anything that becomes visible is light. Any time a veil is lifted, it is only lifted by God or by the Holy Spirit. It is only lifted by God. There is not a thing that we can ever do. Not any work, not any kindness, not any thought process, not anything that can ever lift a veil for us. This is only done by God. When God feels that you're ready, that you have been earnestly seeking him, he will begin to lift veils from you. This is purely done by the light. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper. Here are the words that I constantly use. Awake, O sleeper. And arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Arise from the dead. Get out of your sleep. Transcend the world transcend the world this is what we were commanded to do get rid of this personhood get rid of this selfishness and god will shine his light on you matthew 24 42 therefore stay awake for you do not know on what day your lord is coming first peter 1 13 therefore preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded Set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The grace that is brought to you is the lifting of veils to allow you to see with spiritual eyes. Even when you can see with spiritual eyes, if you remain earnest on the narrow path, the Holy Spirit will continuously be lifting veils from you. It never stops. You are never finished on this path ever. You are never finished. For anyone out here out here to be saying they are so anointed, they are the special ones. God has chosen them. They're better than somebody else. They are massively in the sleep. They are comatose in the sleep. And uh, you should be going in the opposite direction. Revelation 16, 15 Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on, that he may not go about naked and be seen exposed. Do you understand what that means? Keeping your garments on. Your, 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 the, the, the garments that the Bible talks about, the shield, the, the, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of truth, the, the righteousness, keeping your feet grounded in the in the gospel of truth. This is the, the, the warfare shield. Keep your clothes on. Don't ever be caught naked. Don't ever be caught backsliding, sinning, even for one second. Even for one second. This is what it means. That he may not go about naked, and be seen exposed, which sadly is what is happening to these pastors. First Thessalonians 5, 6. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. What is being asleep actually? As I just showed you, you're seeing things on a one-dimensional level because this is where Satan wants you. <laughs> so the terms that I use are being of the world. You are in personhood. You believe that you are this body. You believe that you are your, your name and your title and your gender. You don't understand that you are fully the spirit man. That is being in the sleep. You believe that everything you're living out here is reality. When in fact, this is like a virtual game that we're all in. Because we are spirit beings. And everything that happens, happens in the spiritual realm. The only reason we're perceiving things differently is because we are in this form. It is only our perception. Perception. 
Luke 21, 34. But watch yourself lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life. You believe you're this person. You believe you're, you're your title. You believe you're your job. You believe that you're a mom or a dad or a daughter or, or a pastor or an apostle or a prophet or a bishop. You believe you are these things. You believe you have a right to trample all over people. You have no such right. You are no such title. You are a spirit being inhabiting this body to have a human experience. Once you wake up, you will fully understand this. Colossians 4.2 Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Do you understand why all of these uh, demons that are all around us are trying to get into this form? Because they want to experience this life the way we do with sensation and being able to have pleasures, to feel pleasures. See, outside of the form, there's none of this. Which is why I talk, gave you that exercise the other day that the spirit man is the sky. It's ever present. It's never changing. And the things, the clouds that go by are our thoughts, are our emotions. Do you understand? Understand? And the spirit man has no interest in the outcome of anything that happens in this life because the spirit man knows that this is all an experience to watch us awake. And what happens when we awake? This, this soul aspect of us gets absorbed into the spirit man. And there's only the spirit man left. That is when you fully understand that you are not this body. You are in fact spirit. I will put this in the description for you. What does the Bible say about the conscious mind? Titus 1.15 To the pure, all things are pure, but to the defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But both their minds and their consciences are defiled. You see, these are, what, what is purity? It is the, the divine mind. It is what I've been explaining to you out here. This is what we were born with through the spirit man. This is what God has given us. It is beauty. It is pure. It is holy. We were born into this Satan's kingdom, into this body. We should always be grateful to God that he has given us this body, that we can experience this life and attain these, these lessons to wake up. So everything is a blessing. Everything is a blessing. And no, it doesn't feel good when we're going through it. And this is all a part of the growing process. No pain, no gain. But we in fact have a divine mind that we were born with. This psychological mind and the belief that we are this person and all of these negative emotions and this, this uh, low self-esteem, all of this psychological babble and BS that, that is of the world. It is all of the world, which is all of Satan's kingdom. It is here to oppress us. It is here to torment us, which is why our spirit man from the very beginning is, is pulling us to go back to God, is pull, constantly pulling pulling us to go back to God. We know there's something more. There's got to be more to life than this. There has got to be more to life than this. We're constantly being pulled towards the light. We're constantly being pulled towards the light. And we don't understand what's happening. We just know that we're so confused. None of this makes any sense. There has got to be more to life than this. And even the people that we were told to look up to, they're fallible. Some of them are downright nasty 
Criminals! There's got to be more to life than this. It's not until we, are, we desire God so bad that God is all we can even think of anymore. Nothing of this world is enticing to us any longer. We see the world for what it is. And the only thing we care about is being with God. You have then found the narrow path through Jesus Christ. And you will never get off that path ever again. But these people out here in the sleep who claim to be so highly anointed, they are massively of the world as they still continue with name and fame, as they still continue with these titles, as they still continue with the behaviors of the world. They have not found the narrow path yet, although they claim to have. They have not. This is the deception of Satan. This is a deception of the ego. Hebrews 13, 18. Pray for us, for we are sure that we have a clear conscience, desiring to act honorably in all things. Hebrews 4, 12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, passing through the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Do you understand? I, I, I wish I had the proper words. This is exactly what God's word is. It cuts through all of the deception of Satan, the blindness that Satan wants to keep over our eyes, the sleep that Satan wants to keep us in. The word of God cuts through all of it. You will understand why you can read a, 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 a chapter of the Bible today. Go back and read it a year from now. If you have been steadfast and earnest on your path, you will go back and read that passage a year from now and you will gain new meaning from that verse because God's word is alive. And the more depth that you gain into who you are truly in Christ, the more the Holy Spirit will be lifting veils and allowing you to see. The majority of people out here who believe they are awake are comatose in the sleep. This is the deception and the ploy of Satan's kingdom. It is only those who have truly died to themselves who want nothing from this world who will ever find the narrow path. That is the truth. Are you willing to give up everything you have for God? Ask yourself that question. Because if the answer is no, you're not even close to the narrow path. As you attack those of us who are diligently walking the path. Philippians 2.13 For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. 1 Timothy 1.5 The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. You would never, ever, ever in a, in a trillion lifetimes ever think about gang attacking a person out here. In a trillion lifetimes ever calling another being a witch from a church stage as you understand that all beings are of God there's no one better than anyone else you are literally calling God a witch first Corinthians 4 4 for I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. See, the spirit man doesn't judge anything. The spirit man observes. The spirit man is the pure awareness. As I spoke to you the other day, that you can literally sit with your eyes closed 
and you are watching your thoughts, you are watching your thoughts go by, then you can hear the air conditioner vent go on, then you can hear the sound down the hall, then your attention goes to the butterflies in your stomach, or the fact that you may be hungry, um, your, aware <coughs> your awareness is in you, and it's all around you. And what is your awareness? What is your awareness? That is your spirit. That is your spirit. You know, uh, people who are in the sleep, they associate the spirit with with what you see ghosts like like you see these uh, these these pictures of, of even demons that they have a human body because they are of the earth. Your awareness, God is above time and space. God is above time and space, which is why God is everywhere and knows everything. If God, you see, Satan can't be everywhere. Satan has a, has a form. Satan has a form. He cannot be everywhere. God is light, vibration, energy, and what was the other one? Sound. God is everywhere. Which is why God has appeared as, as a, a pillar of clouds. God has appeared as a pillar of fire. God has appeared as a burning bush. Uh, God can appear in any shape that he wants. Which is, which is why when Jesus was on the earth, we, we, we read the stories of, of uh, several times when, when the Pharisees went to stone him or, or attack him in some way because they didn't like what he did. All of a sudden, Jesus disappeared. Well, the Bible doesn't tell you how he disappeared. But what he did was he went into the fourth dimension and he went into another place. Jesus was fully God in his form. You see, these people out here from the occult and the mystics community, they can use the fourth dimension. They can astral project they can only do that in their astral bodies. They cannot astral project in full form, which is what Jesus did. So Satan is a complete mimicker of God. But there are very big differences as to the power of Satan versus the power of Jesus. It doesn't even come close. It does not even come close. Jesus can use the fourth dimension to escape danger and then fully land someplace else in his full body, not just in his astral body. That's the difference. But the Bible does not explain that to you. You will only see this and understand this as the Holy Spirit lifts veils from your eyes. And nobody out here has seen that yet. And they all, they all thought for some reason that 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 I was a beginning something or other, and that that uh, they were to be the one to school me on something. No, we must learn to stand, to stand for truth, to be able to stand on our own with a backbone, and never ever sacrifice the truth of Jesus Christ for anybody for any reason. Ever. I will put this in the description. Everything I'm, I'm, I'm re, uh, reading from, I will put in the description. What does the Bible say about awareness? Or uh, 1 Corinthians six nineteen. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? Whom you have from God, you are not your own. There is nothing that is not from God. The, the, as you heard in Genesis, God created Adam's body from the dirt of the earth. We are one with the earth. This body is. This is why when the spirit man leaves, this body is a corpse and it will go back to the earth.
2 Peter 3, 1 to 18. This is now the second letter that I am writing to you, beloved. In both of them, I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the predictions of the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior through your apostles, knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires, which is everything you've been seeing out here. Why I have been so brutally attacked. They will say, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. Do you understand? There is nothing that has ever changed. And I have been saying this from day one. What has played out in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve is recreating itself over and over again. And it will continue until the end of the tribulation. There is nothing new under the sun. All things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. For they deliberately overlooked the fact that the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God. Through energy, light, sound, and vibration, which is also how this body was created, which is also how everything we see around us has been created. And it is the variations of these elements that creates the variations in density of what we're seeing around us. Which is where physics comes in. So it's scientifically proven. Everything that's written in the Bible has been scientifically proven. But the Bible doesn't go into all of this physics and science. It is only as you awaken that the Holy Spirit shows you these things. Habakkuk, Habakkuk, 2.14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let everything that has breath worship the Lord. Oh, uh, that, that, those words make me cry every single time. It's the glory of God just moves in me every time I hear those words and I say those words. Let everything that has breath worship the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is an abomination before God for any of us to call any human being your spiritual father. You will have no fathers on this earth you will have no fathers no spiritual fathers there is only one spiritual father understand that this is idolatry and you are being made to sin this is why if you want to find the narrow path you must break away from this mob mentality and thinking that you need a cult or a group or a tribe because you will follow them straight to hell. You will have no fathers on this planet. There is only one father. It is idolatry what these people are doing out here. And they're causing you to sin.
this is the 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 grieving that that the Holy Spirit experiences on a daily basis. Uh, if if you can uh, fully uh, understand, I pray that every single one of you will wake up finally, hopefully, that you will understand how you are grieving the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. And you talk about billions of beings on this planet who are grieving the Holy Spirit every single day. How God continues to love us, it's only because he is God. I'm going to leave this right here for right now. We're almost at an hour. I don't want to go through everything really quick and then you miss the point. There is a ton of information in this video, you guys. And I mean a ton of information. As I said, you've got to not only hear in one dimension, you've got to learn to look for depth. And ask the Holy Spirit to show you the depth and the breadth of what I'm saying. And what you're reading in the Bible. Because as of right now, everything I'm hearing out here is showing that everyone is in a mass unconscious sleep. And you're all speaking about being ready for when, when Jesus comes back for the rapture so that, that Christians can be taken up. There aren't any Christians. There are very few Christians here. Christian means Christ-like. You are walking in a Christ-like way. There are very few Christians out here. Please understand the dire nature of what is happening here. You are being fed a bunch of baloney in Satan's kingdom, which is exactly where he wants you. And the people who are truly awake and on the narrow path, who are trying to get you the truth, we're being attacked so that you will not hear the truth. Understand what's happening out here, people. There's a ton of information in here. Please read and go over and ask the Holy Spirit to open your spiritual eyes to be able to see what I'm saying when I speak to you and read what I'm putting in the description if you truly want to be on the narrow path because none of you have found it yet. That is the very sad truth of everything here. You guys have a blessed day.